What's up, Buck? Doug Dean in the garage. Let's talk about some automotive news today. The top stories in the automotive news world as seen by me for the month of August. Number one, something very interesting. This just dropped over the weekend. Nissan is doing away with the Cummins engine. All right, now a number of years ago, Nissan vowed that they were going to break into the full-size, heavy-duty truck market. They were gonna compete with the big three that dominate the truck market, the pickup truck market. Uh, in 2015 or 14, they landed the Cummins. They stole the exclusivity of the Cummins diesel away from Ram, and this was supposed to be their inroad. They had the Cummins, they had the Titan, which was uh, not a huge truck, but um, large enough to compete, we're in a tunnel, uh, large enough to compete at least a little bit with um, Ram and Ford and Chevy, and they put it out there, and this was supposed to be it. And what happened? Nothing happened nothing happened. Guys who already drove Titans upgraded to the Cummins, but they didn't steal anybody away from the Cummins Ram, the Power Stroke Ford, the Duramax Chevy. If you wanted a diesel truck, you still went to one of the big three. Uh, and so they're doing away with that. They're also doing away with the single cab Titan. Basically, they lost. They vowed to break into the large truck market and they did not succeed. I think their maximum um, uh, penetration was 1.5% uh, of the um, mid to large size heavy duty trucks that were being sold were Nissans. Not very much. Not very much at all. Now, the interesting thing is that the Cummins did sell well. Um, over the past few years, one out of every eight Titans were a Cummins, and half of the Titan XDs that were purchased were the Cummins. So it sold well, but they only sold it to guys who were already driving Nissans, and that doesn't win you any wars. You need to steal away from the big three if you want to sell pickup trucks. Now, those are the facts, um, neither here nor there really. I mean, at 1.5%, nobody's really gonna care that they're not selling the Cummins anymore. Everybody who wanted one probably already has one. Here's what I find interesting. As you guys know, I am a Mopar fan. I'm a fan of Ram trucks. Um, I'm a big fan of the Cummins in the Ram, not in the Nissan at all. Um, and people always say, what, what, what do haters always say about Ram, Cummins Ram diesels, right? They say, oh man, the motor's everything truck is trash. Well, what did they do? They took the motor out of the Ram truck, tried to sell it into another truck, and it didn't sell worth a damn. So much so that the manufacturer is canceling the project after five years. So I don't know, man. Uh, that There must be something to the Ram trucks. That's, <laughs> that's all I'm going to say about that. I'm sure there's some Power Stroke and uh, Duramax guys that are going to have something to say, but um, that's how I see it. Honestly, everybody knows the Cummins is an amazing motor. I'm just going to say it. It's the best diesel out there. All right? I know the more Power Strokes are sold, whatever. Uh, the Cummins is the best diesel you can put in a pickup truck. I'm just saying it. Uh, it's, it's honestly the truth. Um, more about Nissan right now. Another interesting thing to kind of add to this is that not only is Nissan backing away from trucks, but they're doubling down on small cars, which I'm sure you all know why is interesting because most of their auto manufacturers are backing away from small cars. Um, Nissan saying, screw it. If everybody else is going to stop selling sedans, we're just gonna double down on sedans and fill that gap because clearly sedans are never gonna go away. People, there are, there are people who are always gonna want a sedan as opposed to a crossover SUV. Um, and so Nissan, they're putting out a new Versa this year, they're putting out a new Sentra this year, and they are really digging their heels in on that. Whereas companies like Ford are backing away from small cars. Now at this point I wanna talk about uh, my opinion of Nissan, I think they're absolute garbage. All right, I've had the opportunity to work on some Nissans, um, SUVs, Pathfinders, uh, Altima, and they're absolute crap. If they're actually, if you look into some of the lists from the past few years put out by a number of uh, reputable sources on vehicles that give you the least amount of value for your dollar or that have the least amount of longevity, um, Nissan is surprisingly high for a Japanese automaker on lists where you don't get what you paid for. Um, people keep buying them because they have the reputation they had in the 90s, but that's slowly going away and little by little, they have been shrinking as a company. And um, I think the fact that they're backing away from pickup trucks is very telling. I will be interested to see how this move to small cars works for them. Uh, honestly, I hope they go out of business because they don't have a single product anymore that I would want to buy. They used to have a really great little pickup truck um, in the 1980s, the hard body, 
that thing was a monster. It would go 500,000 miles and you'd refresh the engine and go another 500,000. They don't have that anymore. The Nissan Frontier is a garbage truck. Buy a Tacoma. I know that I joke all the time about how much I hate Toyota, um, and I, <laughs> I do, but I respect Toyota. While I hate them, I don't respect Nissan. Their, their product is absolute garbage. And honestly, I think uh, consumers are starting to catch up with that and it's being reflected in their downward trending sales. Uh, if you are a Nissan fan, I'd love to hear a comment in the squawk boxes uh, about why you're still a Nissan fan. I don't anticipate very many comments because there are not a ton of Nissan fans outside of like, you know, Skyline fanboys or something, but I doubt you're following this channel anyway. So, Nissan, ditching trucks, they lost there, uh, and their only choice is to double down on small cars. Cool, good for you, Nissan. Uh, see you in the funny papers. Let's move on to Jeep. <laughs> Man, I wish I had something good to report about Jeep, but I do not, all right? What has been the big news about Jeep this month? If you haven't heard about it, it's the new Wrangler. More specifically, the new Wrangler gets a death wobble, like, immediately. People are buying JLs, JLUs, and Gladiators, and on the way home from the dealership, they're getting death wobble. <sighs> this story hit me hard. I mean, like, square in the chest, needed to sit down. The level of neglect and just general disregard for your consumer that it takes for a brand new vehicle to get death wobble within the first month or two of being owned. And this isn't JLs that were bought last year. This is JLs like over the past few months. Brand new JLs, brand, brand new. Not even a couple thousand miles on them and owners are hitting a pothole and getting death wobbled. Uh, which first of all, it <laughs> must be terrifying because a lot of the people buying brand new JLs are not seasoned Jeepers. You know, uh, when I get death wobble in my 20 year old WJ that I lifted up four inches and beat the hell out of for 10 years, sure, that makes sense. I expect that, I'm okay with that. I don't mind that. When uh, Cindy soccer mom gets death wobble in her JLU that's got 1400 miles on it, what in the world? Who the hell is asleep at the helm that this could even happen? We better find out, and I, I looked everywhere for somebody to say, oh yeah, we found out that this batch of track bars, whatever, who knows? I couldn't find any definitive answer as to why. That was scary enough. And now let's dig into what the solution is. Jeep solution, if you have a brand new JL, JLU, or Gladiator that's getting death wobble almost immediately, is they will have you come back to the dealership and they will give you, wait for it, an upgraded steering stabilizer. Oh, sh**. <laughs> All right. We've dug into Death Wobble a lot on this channel. Uh, there are a lot of channels and people out there who have dug into Death Wobble as it is probably, it's, it's the cancer of the Jeep world. Um, I think it's pretty well documented that steering stabilizers don't fix death wobble. I know it's a bold stance here to say that or I feel like I know more than whatever engineer at Jeep okayed this solution, but, and leave me a comment down there in the squawk boxes if you agree with me that it's pretty common knowledge that steering stabilizers may mask death wobble, they may even mask it really well and for a really long time. But under no circumstances do they cure death wobble, nor do they cause death wobble. What I'm getting at here is Jeep did something. The manufacturing plant, and I think the Wranglers are built in Mexico currently, or Canada? Mexico or Canada, I can't remember. Um, the, the plants where the new Wranglers and Gladiators were built did something so wrong that the front suspension was so screwed up that people are getting death wobble on brand new Jeeps. Now Jeep is masking that issue, essentially kicking the can down the road. Maybe, new, maybe a, an upgraded new steering stabilizer gets you six months, a year, two years. At some point, that steering stabilizer is going to break in and wear a little bit, and that death wobble is going to come back. My fear is that this is going to be a huge hit to Jeep's reputation, to the Wrangler's reputation. Uh, this may even 
cause the Wrangler to go independent front suspension in the future. Think about it. Here, this is just what's playing out in my head. It's 2019, new Wranglers are getting death wobble. They put a Band-Aid on it, a terrible Band-Aid that they should know better. It kicks the can down the road. Two years later, all the people who had death wobble on their brand new Jeep were mortified by it and completely disgusted. It's two years later, now they're getting it again. Maybe their warranties are up, their whatever. They now have to deal with death wobble and we all know how what a nightmare it is chasing death wobble. They are completely turned off the Wrangler brand, possibly the Jeep brand. They go and buy Toyota 4Runners next time. Jeep listens to the feedback and they determine, well, the solid front axle is the reason you got death wobble, so I guess the uh, next generation of Wrangler should get independent front suspension. This keeps me up at night when I think about this. All right, now I'm not gonna talk any more about this. I'm gonna use this as a completely unpleasant segue into the last thing I wanna talk about, and that's the new Ford Bronco that's coming. The new Ford Bronco might as well just be called the Ford Wrangler killer, all right? Wrangler has been able to exist since about 1996 with zero competition. Name me another midsize SUV over the last 20 years that's body on frame, solid front axle and comes with dedicated off-road packages. I'm not going to wait any longer because you're not going to come up with an answer. Since the Bronco went away in 1996, the Wrangler has had zero competition. If you wanted that style vehicle, you had to buy the Wrangler. If you didn't want to buy the Wrangler, you had to compromise. Ford said, screw that. We're coming back with the Bronco. We're aiming it at the Wrangler. And I am afraid they are going to steal significant market share away from the Wrangler because we've gotten lazy. And when I say we, I mean Jeep. Jeep got lazy with the Wrangler. They got complacent with the Wrangler. They knew that they had the fanboys buy the short and curly, so they said, eh, we'll just do whatever. It doesn't matter. They're going to buy it anyway. Let's look at the new Ford Bronco. Uh, we don't know everything about the Bronco. I'm not going to talk about everything we do know, but I'm going to talk about a lot, uh, specifically as it relates to hurting the Wrangler. And I'm bringing this up because we need to be aware of this, all right? The Wrangler is a vehicle that shouldn't really exist anymore. It's a relic. I love that it exists. I love that it's a relic. It's body on frame, it's solid front axle. That's awesome, but if we're not careful, that goes away, and that would be a shame. You people know how I feel about solid front axle and full frame vehicles. Um, so let's look into the Bronco and uh, so that you guys can share some of the fear that I have. Um, honestly, I'm intrigued. I like that the Bronco's coming out. Let me preface with this. I like that the Bronco's coming back, and I like that they're going to challenge the Wrangler. I hope that the Bronco coming back makes the Wrangler better and doesn't kill it. That's my hope. Uh, we know the Wrangler's coming back now. It's confirmed. It was supposed to be 2020. It's starting to look like 2021. That's fine. Um, another feather in their cap. It is going to be manufactured, well, assembled in the United States at Ford's Wayne, Michigan plant. Love that. Let's bring some jobs back to Michigan. Um, Let's build some vehicles uh, in Detroit. Let's do that, all right? It is going to be body on frame. It is going to be on the Ranger platform. Uh, now, in the US, we didn't get this vehicle, but there's a vehicle called the Ford Everest that is kind of like what we can expect the new uh, Bronco to look like. Uh, the new Bronco we, has been confirmed that it's going to have a more retro look, so it's going to be much boxier than the Everest. It is going to have the same uh, square rectangular uh, grill as the old Broncos. They say it's even going to have round headlights. Uh, additionally, and again, this is where they're aiming right at the Wrangler. Solid front and rear axle, beautiful. Love it. They're suggesting it's likely going to have what Ford is calling an air top, which is going to be that removable hard top that the old Broncos have had, uh, which is awesome that they're going to bring that back. And again, if you like the Wrangler, you can see how the Bronco is a totally viable option for you. In that same vein, it's uh, suggested that it's likely going to have removable doors and it's not confirmed. We're hoping it comes in a two door and a four door version. It may just come in a four door, which would be a bummer, but I guess in 2019, you gotta take what you can get. Um, they're even suggesting a baby Bronco based on the Escape, which I find very interesting. The Escape, of course, is unibody. Um, 
but could you imagine if they made a full frame solid front and rear axle Bronco on the Ranger platform? Then they turn around and selling side by side, they have a baby Bronco that looks almost the same, but gets better gas mileage and is unibody. I mean, that could be a killer friggin' combo. Um, I don't know that I've ever talked about it on the channel, but something I always thought was when they made the Renegade, they should have made it look more like a Wrangler. I think it would have sold a lot better. Maybe even give the Renegade removable doors. All right, if they'd made a baby Wrangler based on the Renegade, uh, I think that would have sold really well. well. Ford is suggesting that they're gonna do that. A lot of this is all but confirmed, meaning we are taking it as fact, but it isn't technically confirmed yet. So I can't tell you that it's definitely gonna happen, but everything I've said is all but confirmed. So let's flesh out this picture. We're gonna get a body on frame. It's probably gonna have aluminum frame. Uh, Wrangler went to an aluminum frame in 2018. That makes perfect sense. Keep it light. We're gonna have a body on frame, solid front and rear axle, American made, American assembled, vehicle with a removable top, with removable doors, with dedicated off-road packages. I mean, I could have just been describing the Wrangler, but I was just describing the Bronco. I think Ford is going to kill it with this thing. Um, and I think it is going to be a huge wake-up call for Wrangler and Jeep. Hey man, you're not untouchable, and if you want to stay in this market, you're gonna have to try a little bit. I am excited for the Bronco. I know that I tend to talk about everything as it relates to Jeep or Dodge, because that's where my interests lie, but I am excited for the Bronco independently. Uh, conversely, I am concerned what it may do to the Wrangler, but hey, let's hope that it does something positive, and the next generation of Wrangler is a huge improvement. Not that there's anything wrong, per se, with the current one, except the fact that it gets death wobble from the factory. Uh, anyway, let's recap real quick. So, Nissan's backing away from pickup trucks. Fine, good. They weren't good at it anyway. Moving to small cars, they're not good at that either, but at least it keeps them in their box, and uh, they're better at small cars. Hopefully, they can move forward from this and get back some of the quality they used to have because Nissan has slipped. I know a lot of people don't realize it unless you've owned a Nissan recently, but they have slipped dramatically. So the new Jeeps get death wobble. That's great. And their solution is a steering stabilizer. Hilarious. Um, this, in my opinion, is something that could kill a brand. Could kill the Wrangler brand if they're not careful. Um, obviously, that's worst case scenario, but it, this should be a wake up call for Jeep. Uh, and I don't mean a wake-up call that they need to go to independent front suspension. Uh, as a continuation of that story, the new Bronco's coming out. Whew, it's going to be a Wrangler killer. That's all there is to it. Um, the new Bronco is going to be to the Wrangler what the Camaro was to the Mustang, man. They aiming it right at it, and their goal is to steal sales away. And from where I'm sitting, it looks like they can do it, too. So, let me know what you think about all of this. Um, I want to know if anybody has owned a Nissan... Titan XD with the Cummins, let me know what your experience was, and especially if you've owned another um, heavy duty truck as well. I'd like to know how they really stack up. My understanding, granted never driven one, is that they missed the mark and that's why they're doing away with it. Um, Nissan small cars, sure, comment on that. I can't imagine anybody's gonna have anything to say. Uh, let me know if you own one of those JLs, JLUs, Gladiators that's getting death wobble from the factory. Let me know how you feel about this. Let me know how you feel about being offered a steering stabilizer to fix it. And like I said, people love to question me on this. Every time I bring up the fact that steering stabilizers neither cause nor fix death wobble, I get people down and say, I put a steering stabilizer on my Cherokee and now it's fixed. It's not fixed. You masked it, dummy. All right, you're kicking the can down the road. So please comment down in the squawk boxes if you agree with me and you know that steering stabilizers don't fix that. And then finally, I know people are gonna have stuff to say about the Bronco. Uh, you guys have actually asked me numerous times to bring up the Bronco in videos. Uh, so here you go, we brought up the Bronco. We talked about what we know. I didn't talk about the engines because I find Ford engines boring now. I get it, you're able to do with a turbo V6 what I can do with a V8. I don't care, I like V8s. Um, I don't really wanna hear about your turbo V whatever. Um, additionally, I was gonna bring up stuff on the new Grand Grand Cherokee today, but I was reading into it and there's really just nothing to say. People keep just re-speculating the same stuff that was out there. Um, 
there it, it was spotted out there doing test drives but they are really playing it close to the vest if you look at the spy photos you can tell that there's some serious body panel masking underneath those tarps they are trying desperately for us to not know how big the new Grand Cherokee is and what it ultimately looks like we still can't even tell if it's five or seven seats um, with the tarping on, it looks huge. It looks like a Dodge Durango, but I think they're doing some clever things under there to hide what it looks like. So we're not gonna talk about the Grand Cherokee. Believe me, when there's something to say about the new Grand Cherokee, you will hear it here first. That's all there is to it, all right? So I'm gonna close this one out. Leave me those comments down there in the squawk boxes. Uh, look forward to another automotive news session in September. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. See you next time.